Thanks to Reolink for sponsoring a portion of this video. There are things we need, and then there are things we just want. Even if you are an avid video file and audio file, this universal disc player resides very much in the want category. You don't need the Magnetar UDP 900, but I mean, I 100% understand why you'd want it. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison, and after a little over 100 days spent with the Magnetar UDP 900, I can confidently say this machine is exquisite. If you're an audiophile, videophile, or both, with lots of money and very little time, then you have my blessings and assurances that you can close this video and go buy the Magnetar UDP 900 with plenty of confidence that your money is going toward the best universal disc player that you can buy today. Go ahead, you can thank me later when you come back to see me for advice on the best TV and audio gear to hook up to this thing. For the rest of you out there though, I have to assume that you're curious about what makes a $3,000 disc player. Perhaps you're wondering if you should splurge for the UDP 900, or save quite a bit of cash and get the $1,600 Magnetar UDP 800, or save even more money and get the $1,100 Panasonic DP UB9000P1K. Well, it's my plan to answer all of those questions as I take you through what the UDP 900 here has to offer while comparing and contrasting it with those two other premium players I just mentioned. Now, if you're sitting there thinking to yourself, Magno what? How did we even get here? That's a fair question and one that I answer among several others in this unboxing video that I did earlier. Please feel free to watch me nerd out as I got my first few moments with this monster. Or don't because I'm gonna summarize much of what's in that video right now. Magnetar exists to fill the void left behind by Oppo. That's right, once upon a time, Oppo didn't just send phones to the US, it also made the world's most beloved disc players for almost a decade between 2009 and 2018. In fact, Oppo's players are still used by enthusiasts and industry professionals alike, and some models fetch a pretty handsome price online. What made Oppo's players great was their robust build quality, their we can play anything attitude, and their top-notch audio and video fidelity. Enter Magnetar, which picked up the baton that Oppo set down and started running with it. To be clear though, Magnetar didn't just pop up out of nowhere. The folks behind Magnetar are also responsible for the Revon brand of high-end disc players. Hope I'm saying that right. Anyway, those are pretty big outside of North America, just not so much in the States and Canada. So these are well-established, well-respected engineers and designers. Magnetar may be a new brand, but its tech's pedigree is definitely well-established. Now, in the interest of being as succinct as I can in this review, let's get something out of the way right away. If you're looking for the best quality video disc player, you just wanna get the best picture you can from your DVD, Blu-ray, and 4K Blu-ray collection, then I suggest you go buy the Panasonic DP-UB9000P1K because that player is less expensive than both of Magnetar's machines and will do exactly what you need it to do. Furthermore, if you're a budget-minded audiophile and wanna get great sound out of your CD collection, the $1,100 Panasonic is a tremendously good CD player as well with top-notch DACs and balanced audio outputs to boot. If, however, you're looking for a play everything machine, one that can play super audio CDs and DVD audio DVDs and even Kodak picture CDs, literally every optical disc-based format that has ever been, then you need one of Magnetar's players because the Panasonic doesn't do SACD or DVD audio discs. Now, let's just pause a second to call out the fact that I'm basically whittling down a twig here, right? The number of folks who need or want a disc player at all has dwindled over the years from log to stick to now twig. And from that twig of an audience, we have identified the skewer that is the audience for premium players like the Panasonic 9000P1K. From that skewer, we have then whittled down to the toothpick audience that exists for the Magnetar UDP 800. Now let's whittle that toothpick all the way down to a splinter, right? Who needs the UDP 900 here? 
Well, if you're looking for a disc player that can act as an outboard digital to analog converter for just about any digital audio device, like a PC or a mini disc player or an older uh, CD player with a lame DAC in it, or one of today's modern streamers that maybe has a great interface, but a lame DAC, any application where you want one of the best DACs you can buy, the Magnetar UDP 900 has that. If you like to see, feel, and smell your gear, yeah, I said smell, wipe that smirk off your face, then you want the UDP 900. Notice how we have transitioned from needs to wants. Outside of the outboard DAC functionality, the Magnetar UDP 800 has almost all the audio chops that the 900 has. I think the 800 uses Burr Brown DACs for its dedicated stereo audio outputs, as opposed to the 900's second set of ESS Sabre DACs. And even though the UDP 800 isn't as overbuilt as the 900, it's got a very similar power supply and a very robust chassis itself. Functionally, it's gonna do all of the audiophile things. Let's be honest, the UDP 900 isn't built based on practicality. It is 35 pounds of flex for your AV rack. A rack, by the way, which is not tucked away in a closet or basement room. No, you do not get the UDP 900 as part of an integrated system that hides all your stuff in a climate controlled server room. The UDP 900 is kind of a showpiece. For those of us who regard electronics as art, the way that sneakerheads do with shoes that they put on display, the UDP 900 is like a transistorized Van Gogh, except it's stereo. Get it? Because Van Gogh cut off his ear? No? Okay, never mind. I'm better with pixels than I am with jokes. Speaking of pixels, check out the Pixel Flex from our sponsor, Real Link. This is the Reolink Duo 3 PoE. And while I unbox it to show it off, let me just say that this security camera is the model for where I'd like to see all security cameras go in the future. I am genuinely impressed by this thing. There are three things that make this camera extra special. One, it's got a 16 megapixel sensor, which means it can capture incredible detail. So go ahead and zoom in. You'll be shocked at what you can see. If you wanna get that license plate number of a passing car or catch that name tag, no problem. Two, it uses two lenses to capture two separate images, then seamlessly stitches them together so you get a distortion-free 180 degree panoramic view of your space. And three, this is possibly my favorite one, the Duo 3 PoE offers a super cool motion track feature, which can track a person, vehicle, or animal, then show its location, time-stamped, in a single image like this. How cool is that? It'll even send real-time images via email. And the best part of this is you don't have to scrub video or wait to download video to see what just happened. And it's got a bunch of other features Real Link is already known for, like color and black and white night vision, two-way audio, smart detection, all the goodies you want. Find out more about the Real Link Duo 3 PoE by clicking the link below. Thanks again to Real Link for sponsoring this portion of our video. Yeah, so I guess I should describe how I tested this thing to arrive at my conclusions. I'll do that, but before I dig in, I should point out that the first frame I saw and the first note I heard told me everything. Sometimes you just know immediately, and Magnetar delivered that for me. For video evaluation, I compared the Magnetar UDP900 to a Sony X1100ES and a Sony PlayStation 5. I did not integrate the Xbox Series X as a Blu-ray player as I've well established that it is inferior to the PS5 for disc playback and just video fidelity. I have reached out to Panasonic for a review sample of the 9001 PK and will update this review after I've made a comparison to that machine. For audio evaluation, I connected the UDP 900 to an Anthem STR integrated via both balanced and unbalanced analog inputs as well as the optical digital output so that I could compare its DAC performance against the one built into the Anthem integrated. On the other end of the Anthem is a gorgeous pair of Golden Ear T66 speakers outfitted with AudioQuest NRG Z3 power cables as well as Rocket 33 speaker cables in a bi-wire configuration. Not pictured in the studio here is Eclipse Reference Premier Dolby Atmos 5.14 Speaker system driven by a Marantz SR8015, which I used for multi-channel SACD and DVD audio playback. 
I also connected the Magnetar to an Integra DRX 5.4 receiver, mostly to test its HDMI CEC and HDMI compatibility with the Integra's internal switching system. For displays, I used the Sony A95L QD OLED as my reference monitor, as well as the TCL 98-inch QM8 and the Vizio Quantum Pro. Okay, with that mouthful out of the way, guys, the Magnetar UDP900 aced every test I threw at it. The 4K HDR video quality is just so pristine. Now in this side-by-side, -side, you might see a bit of the difference between the PS5 and the Magnetar, but probably you're not gonna see the fine differences between the Sony X1100ES and the Magnetar, at least not through our camera and then YouTube and then whatever display you're watching on. Now, the difference in quality between the PS5 and the Magnetar is pronounced enough to be seen in aggregate. You just, you get that impression. Whereas the improvements over the Sony ES player were, let's say they were marginal and they took a lot of pixel peeping just to register. I will say that one feature the Panasonic 9000 offers, but the Magnetar does not, is a suite of custom tone mapping options. The Panasonic player's video processor and its tone mapping is probably better than some mid-range TVs. And so that could be handy to have instead of relying on the TV's HDR tone mapping. If the Magnetar UDP900 had that, then I'd have to say that it has everything and that just doesn't even seem fair. The Magnetar's built-in upscaler is excellent. I can see little to no difference between the 1080p to 4K upscale as performed by the Sony A95L versus the Magnetar's built-in upscaler. The absence of artifacts from the Magnetar would be impressive enough, but the fact that it reduces macro blocking and banding so well is mighty impressive. I just had to pop in this Herbie Hancock concert DVD to see what it could do, and it looked very good. I mean, it's still a 480p DVD, and that upscaling job is an absolute nightmare. But the Magnetar holds its own versus the Sony, which is massive praise. The Sony A95L's Cognitive XR processor is better, but the Magnetar is like right behind it. The thing is, those are video performance attributes that I'd expect from the Panasonic player too, and from Magnetar's less expensive player. What I really wanted was an amazing two-channel audio experience. And guys, I got it. Look, I've just been giddy over here for months. I've been pulling out all these CDs that I haven't heard in ages, and I've finally been able to enjoy multi-channel SACD and DVD audio again, because while the Sony X1100ES will read those discs and pass along the PCM or DSD audio stream, I've had some trouble with the receiver end, which I'm sure is my fault, but I haven't had time to figure it out. The Magnetar UDP900 just decodes it and puts out a gorgeous multi-channel analog signal. Now, honestly, the Magnetar player itself, its mechanics are a bit noisy. I'm talking about the power switching and the, the tray. It makes some clicks and noises as it operates, but the analog audio signal that it puts out is dead. Quiet. That super low noise floor allows a perfectly black canvas on which the music is painted, and it is revelatory. Now, cards on the table. It's been a while since I tested any other audiophile disc players, so I can't sit here and tell you that the analog section of the Magnetar is categorically better than that of, say, a Macintosh MCD350 or a Yamaha CDS1000, though I'd like to find out. No, all I can say is that the UDP900 is the best sounding disc player in this setup by far, and the best sounding disc player I've used since my Oppo UDP205, which unfortunately has some sort of DAC processing error in it now. So I couldn't make a direct comparison for this review. Which brings up an important point, that Oppo 205, Repairing it might be hard, whereas the Magnetar UDP 900 is actively supported right now. Anyway, guys, the takeaway here is that the Magnetar UDP 900 is fantastic. It is my favorite disc player now. Oppo will always have a piece of my heart, but I've moved on and I like the new me with this Magnetar player. It's not for everyone. In fact, it's hardly the smart choice for anyone but it is never ever going to be a poor choice. And not only will it not let you down, it does a marvelous job of lifting you up. I know it's done so for me. Thanks as always for watching everyone. What do you think of the UDP 900 here? 
And what did you think of the job I did comparing it to the other premium players on the market? A lot of you guys asked for that. Let me know down in the comments. And while you're down there, smash the like button and punch the subscribe button so we pop up in your feed. I've got lots more audio goodness coming your way this year, and I don't want you to miss any of it. I'll see you on the next one. And until then, here's two other videos I think you might like.